Greetings again everyone, here's another interesting mathematical equation that we are going to solve. Now only geniuses can solve these equations in less than 2 minutes. You can prove me wrong in the comments. Now as we are about to dive into this lesson, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for the latest updates. Now we start to solve this equation by taking this 80 and we bring it to the left hand side of our equation where it now becomes a negative 80. And so now we have x squared minus x cubed minus 80 equals 0. Now having this equation, we can further simplify this equation by taking this negative 80. Now this negative 80 can be simplified as negative 64 minus 16. So we'll have 64 and 16. And so this means that we'll have x squared minus x cubed. And since we have negative 64, we put that here. And so we'll have negative 64 and we also have negative 16. And this equals 0. And now in doing this, if we look at 64, we know that 64 is a cubic number, meaning we multiply a number by itself three times. And so in this case, we'll have four cubes. And it's the same for 16, we know that 16 is a squared number, which is actually 4 squared. And so with this, we'll now rewrite our equation with these values. So I'll have x squared minus x cubed minus 4 cubes, which is 64. So we'll have 4 cubes here. And we'll do the same for negative 16. We know that negative 16 is actually 4 squared, so we'll have minus 4 squared, and this equals 0. And so from here we can group our terms, so here we have a pair of cubic numbers and here we also have a pair of squared numbers, so we can group our like terms. So in grouping our terms we'll have x squared minus 4 squared and we'll also group our cubic numbers so we'll have minus x cubed minus 4 cubes and this is equal to 0. Now let us look at what we have here closely. So if you look closely, you can see here we have what we call the difference of two squares. And here, even though it looks like the difference of two cubes, what we're going to do is that we're going to factor out negative 1. So we'll have x squared minus 4 squared and in factoring negative 1, we'll have negative 1 in brackets x cubed plus 4 cubes. And this is still equal to 0. Now in our equation, we see where we have x squared minus 4 squared, we said that that's a difference of 2 squares. And if we recall the algebraic lessons, we'll understand that a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b in one pair of brackets and in the other pair we'll have a minus b. And this is how you expand the difference of 2 squares. And now moving along, we see here where we have the sum of two cubes and the sum of two cubes can be expanded by having a cubed plus b cubed is equal to a plus b in the first pair of brackets and in the second pair would have a squared minus ab plus b squared. So we'll be applying that to our equation. So here we have the difference of two squares and we expand this by saying x plus 4 in the first pair of brackets and in the second pair we have x minus 4. And here we have minus 1 and then in brackets we are going to expand the sum of two cubes. So we say that this is expanded by having x plus 4 in the first pair of brackets and in the second pair we would have x squared minus 4x plus 4 squared. Now if you look at our expression, you see that we have x plus 4 here and we see that being repeated here. This means that we can factor out our x plus 4 as follows. So we'll have x plus 4 in one pair of brackets and in the second pair we'll have x minus 4 in the first pair of brackets and uh, we'll have that minus 1 and then we're going to put what's here inside our brackets since we have factored out x plus 4. So this will have negative 1 times in brackets x squared minus 4x plus 4 squared or we know that 4 squared gives us 16 so we can just put that as 16. And let's not forget that this equation also equals to 0. Now having this being simplified, we break this down further by having x plus 4 in the first pair of brackets and in the second pair, we will now simplify by having x minus 4 and then we multiply negative 1 with whatsoever is inside the bracket here. So we we'll have negative x squared plus, since negative and a negative gives us a positive, so that's plus 4x and negative and a positive gives us a negative, so that's negative 16. And of course, this still equals to 0. 
And now with this, we can simplify our second pair of brackets further. So we'll start by having x plus 4 in the first pair of brackets. And in our second pair, we break this down by having negative x squared. So we'll have that first. And then we'll say that we'll have 4x and we add that to this x, which gives us 5x. And here we have negative 4 and we are subtracting a negative from a negative which is going to give us 4 plus 16 gives us 20 and we keep the negative sign so it's going to be negative 20. And our equation is still equal to 0. And with this we can now apply our zero property rule which states that if two expressions multiply together to give us zero, either one of them is equal to zero or both are equal to zero. So here you have x plus 4 is equal to zero and we have negative x squared plus 5x minus 20 is also equal to zero. And so in solving x on this side, we'll know that we subtract 4 on both sides and this gives us x is equal to negative 4. And this what we are looking at here is what we'll refer to as our real solution. So x is equal to negative 4 and this is our real solution. Now let's look at our second equation to see if we can arrive at our solutions. So here we are going to start by dividing this expression by negative 1 so that we can get x squared to be a positive x squared. So, so we have x squared minus minus 5x plus 20 equals 0 and this is our equation and now if you look at this we have what we call a trinomial expression where we have the values of a b and c such that a is equal to 1 b is equal to negative 5 c is equal to 20 and now to solve the values of x we apply what we call our algebraic rule where it states that x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a and now since we know the values of a, b and c, we'll be plugging in, in these values into our algebraic equation respectively. So we start by having x is equal to negative and in brackets we'll have the value of b which is negative 5 plus or minus the square root of negative 5 being squared minus 4ac which is 4 times 1 times 20. And this is all over 2 times a which a is 1 so that's 2 times 1. And then from here we say that x is equal to, we know a negative and a negative here gives us a positive, so we have 5 plus or minus the square root of, we know a negative 5 being squared is going to give us 25, and this is going to be subtracted by 4 times 1 times 20 is going to give us 80. And this of course is going to be divided by 2 times 1, and we know that 2 times 1 is just 2, so we just say divided by 2. So then from here we'll have x is equal to 5 plus or minus the square root of, we know 25 minus 80 is going to give us a negative value in this case we're gonna have negative 55 and this is all over 2 now from here we'll be simplifying our value for x a little bit further so we'll have x is equal to 5 plus or minus the square root of this time we're gonna have the square root of 55 and we're gonna be multiplying that by the square root of negative 1 and of course this is all over 2 doing this we separate 55 from the negative as you know negative square root of negative 1 is represented by i which is the imaginary number so from here in solving x, we'll say that x is equal to 5 plus or minus the square root of 55 i all over 2. So now having this solution for x, we can say that this solution is what we call a complex solution as we have the imaginary number which is represented by i. So this value for x or these two values for x are complex solutions of x. So we'll be going back and we'll be looking at our real solution and we said that our real solution is that x is equal to negative 4. We'll be verifying this solution for x as we will be checking that with our original equation. So let's go ahead and verify our solution. Also as we approach to the end of our video don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to my channel to stay connected and to see more math videos like these ones. Alright, so we said that we have x squared minus x cubed and we said that that's equal to 80 and uh, from here knowing the value of x, we can say that we'll have negative 4 in brackets powered by 2, so that's negative 4 in brackets squared minus negative 4 being cubed, so that's negative 4 again in brackets being cubed and we are checking to see if that's equal to 80. We're not negative 4 in brackets squared means negative 4 in brackets times in brackets we could just put negative 4. So that's negative 4 times negative 4 basically. So we have minus negative 4 being cubed again is negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4 and we are checking to see if that's all equal to 80. So we know that here negatives are cancelled out since negative and a negative gives us a positive so we're not 4 times 4 gives us 16. 
and from here we cancel out our negative so from here we can say that 4 times 4 which gives us 16 and 16 times negative 4 gives us negative 64 and is this equal to 80 let's find out now if we recall where we see a negative and a negative together so we have 16 minus negative 64 where we see this negative and this negative not this is actually going to give us a positive so we could just convert that to a positive and so therefore we are saying 16 plus 64 and that gives us 80 and uh, there we can see that our solution is verified that x is indeed equal to negative 4. Now I want to send my appreciation for staying tuned with me to the end of this video. I hope that this was very informative. You can take the time out to send me a super thanks if you appreciate these videos. And also don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to stay connected and to see my latest updates. Also don't forget to check out my math olympiad playlist or my complex solutions playlist to see how to solve similar algebraic exponential equations. Now I'll be looking forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks again and take care.